Micah 1. The word of Hashem that came to Micah the Morishite in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, that he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear, O peoples, all of them. Listen, O land and its fullness. Let the Lord Hashem Elohim be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy sanctuary. For behold, Hashem is going forth from his place. He will descend and trample the heights of the land. The mountains will melt away under him, and the valleys will split open like wax before a fire, like water flowing down a slope. All this because of the sin of Jacob, because of the transgressions of the house of Israel. Who caused the sin of Jacob? Was it not Samaria? Who caused the high places of Judah? Was it not Jerusalem? I will make Samaria into a mound in the field, a place to plant vineyards. I will roll away its stones to the valley and lay bare its foundations. All of its graven images will be smashed, and all of its idolatrous gifts will be burned in fire. And I will make all of its idols desolate, for they were collected as harlots hire, and they will revert to harlots hire. For this I will lament and wail. I will go about delirious and naked. I will make lamentation like the jackals and mourning like ostriches. For her wound is grievous. For it has come to Judah. It has extended until the gate of my people up to Jerusalem. Tell it not in Gath. Weep not at all. In each house of Aphra, wallow in the dirt. Pass on to exile. O inhabitant of Saphir, with nakedness uncovered. The inhabitant of Zanan did not go forth in lamentation for Bethazel. The enemy will seize the cost of his stay from you. For the inhabitants of Maroth were anguished over the lost good. But evil came down from before Hashem to the gate of Jerusalem. Fasten the chariot to the swift steed, O inhabitant of Lashish. That was the original sin for the people of Zion. For it was in you that the sins of Israel were found. Therefore send gifts to Moresheth Gath. The houses of Ashib will become a lost cause to the kings of Israel. I will yet bring a dispossessor against you, O inhabitant of Marashah. The glory of Israel will draw to Adullam. Make yourself bald and pull out your hair for the children of your delight. Make your baldness broad like an eagle's, for they have departed from you. Micah 2 Woe to those who devise iniquity and plan evil upon their beds. At the morning's light, they carry it out, for there is power in their hand. They covet fields and they rob them. They covet houses and they take them. They oppress a man and his household, a person, and his heritage. Therefore, thus said Hashem, Behold, I am devising evil against this family, from which you will not extricate your necks. You will not walk erect, for it will be a bad time. On that day, he will recite a parable about you. He will lament. A lament has come to be. He will say, We have been utterly plundered. God is exchanging the portion of my people. How could he return what was mine when our field is apportioned to the enemy? Therefore, there shall not be for you one who casts a surveyor's line for the lot in the congregation of Hashem. Do not preach, they preach. They shall not preach to these people, so that shame shall not overtake them. Should this be said by the house of Jacob, has Hashem become short-spirited? Are these his deeds? Behold, My ways are benevolent with the one who walks with uprightness. Yesterday, my people arose as an enemy to its fellows. For the sake of a garment, a mantle, you would strip them, making innocent passerby fugitives of war. You evict each of the women of my people from the home of her delight. From her young children, you remove my glory forever." Arise and go into exile, because not for this purpose is the resting place given to you. 
because it has become defiled, it will destroy you absolutely. If a man would be going about deceiving with wind and falsehood and would say, I will preach to you to drink wine and liquor, he would be an approved preacher for this people. I will surely gather all of you, O Jacob. I will surely assemble the remnant of Israel. I will place them together like a flock in a fold, like a herd in its pen. They will teem with people. The one who breaks forth will go before them. They will break forth and pass through. They will go out through the gates. Their king will pass in front of them with Hashem at their head. Micah 3. I said, Listen now, you leaders of Jacob and officers of the house of Israel. Is it not up to you to know the law? But you hate good and love evil. You rob people's skin from upon them and their flesh from upon their bones. You have eaten the flesh of my people. You have stripped their skin from upon them. You have broken open their bones and you have sliced them like that which is in a pot and like meat in a cauldron. Then they will cry out to Hashem, but he will not answer them. He will hide his face from them at that time, just as they had done evil with their deeds. Thus said Hashem about the prophets who mislead my nation, who chew with their teeth and declare peace. But whoever does not put food into their mouths, they prepare war against him. Therefore it shall be night for you because of such vision. And it shall be dark for you because of such divination. The sun will set upon the prophets, and the daylight will be blackened for them. The seers will be ashamed and the diviners disgraced, and all of them will wear veils over their lips, for they had no word of God. But as for me, I was filled with strength by the spirit of Hashem, and with justice and might to inform Jacob of his transgression and Israel of his sin. Listen now to this, O leaders of the house of Jacob and officers of the house of Israel, who detest justice and who twist all that is straight, who build Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. Her leaders judge for bribes and her Kohanim teach for a fee and her prophets divine for money. Yet they rely on Hashem saying, Behold, Hashem is in our midst. No evil can befall us. Therefore, because of you, Zion will be plowed over like a field. Jerusalem will become heaps of rubble, and the Temple Mount will become like stone heaps in the forest. Micah 4 It will be in the end of days that the mountain of the Temple of Hashem will be firmly established as the most prominent of the mountains. And it will be exalted up over the hills, and people's will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Hashem, and to the temple of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of Hashem from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle the arguments of mighty nations from far away. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning knives. Nation will not lift sword against nation, nor will they learn war anymore. They will sit, each man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none will make them afraid. For the mouth of Hashem, master of legions, has spoken. For all the peoples will go forth, each man in the name of his God. But we go forth with the name of Hashem, our God, forever and ever. On that day, the word of Hashem, I will assemble the lame one and gather in the one driven away and whomever I have harmed. And I will make the lame one into a remnant and the one forced to wander into a mighty nation. And Hashem will reign over them at Mount Zion from now and forever. And you, Migdaladar, tower of the flock, O fell of the daughter of Zion, they will come back to you. And the original kingdom will arrive, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Now, 
Why do you seek foreign alliance? Is there not a king in your midst? Has your counselor become lost? That pains have gripped you like a woman in childbirth? Be in pain and groan like a woman in childbirth, O daughter of Zion. For now you will leave the city and dwell in the field. You will come to Babylonia and there you will be rescued. There Hashem will redeem you from the palms of your enemies. And now many nations have assembled against you. They say, let her be proclaimed guilty and let our eyes behold Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of Hashem and do not understand his counsel. For he has gathered them like sheaves to the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make your horn like iron, and I will make your hooves like copper, and you will grind many peoples. I will consecrate unto Hashem all their ill-gotten riches, and their wealth unto the Lord of the entire land. Now muster yourself, O daughter of the armed band. He has laid siege against us. With a stick they strike on the cheek the judges of Israel. Micah 5. Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are too small to be among the thousands of Judah, but from you someone will emerge for me to be a ruler over Israel, and his origins will be from early times, from days of old. Therefore, he will deliver them to their enemies until the time that a woman in childbirth gives birth. Then the rest of his brothers will return with the children of Israel. He will stand up and lead with the strength of Hashem, with the majesty of the name of Hashem his God. They will settle in peace, for at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. And this will assure peace. If Assyria will come into our land, and if he will tread upon our palaces, we will set up seven shepherds or eight officers against him, and they will pound the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod at its gateway. And he will rescue us from Assyria when they enter our land and when they tread onto our borders. The remnant of Jacob will be in the midst of many peoples like dew from Hashem, like raindrops upon grass, which is not hoped for from man and not awaited from a human being. And the remnant of Jacob will be among the nations, in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the animals of the forest, and like a lion's whelp among flocks of sheep, who, when he passes by, tramples and tears apart, and there is no rescuer. Your hand will be raised over your enemies, and all your adversaries will be eliminated. It will be on that day, the word of Hashem, I will eliminate your horses from your midst, and I will destroy your chariots. I will eliminate the walled cities from your land, and I will tear down all of your fortifications. I will eliminate witchcraft from your domain, and there will be no diviners among you. I will eliminate your graven idols and your pillars from your midst, and you will no longer prostrate yourselves to your own handiwork. I will uproot your Asherah trees from your midst, and I will destroy those who hate you. And with anger and wrath, I will carry out revenge against the nations, because they did not listen. Micah 6. Listen now what Hashem says to me. Arise and contend before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Listen, you mountains, to the grievance of Hashem, and you, bedrock, the foundations of the earth. For Hashem has a grievance with his people, and he will contend with Israel. My people, what wrong did I do to you, and how did I tire you? Testify against me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage. And I sent Moses and Aaron and Miriam before you. My people, hear now what Balak, king of Moab, schemed. And what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and all the events of Shittim to Gilgal, in order to recognize the righteous acts of Hashem. You ask, with what shall I approach Hashem, humble myself before God on high? Shall I approach him with burnt offerings, or with calves in their first year? 
Will Hashem be appeased by thousands of rams or with tens of thousands of streams of oil? Shall I give over my firstborn to atone for my transgression or the fruit of my belly for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good. What does Hashem require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? The voice of Hashem calls out to the people of the city. The man of wisdom recognizes your name. Listen, O Israel, to the rod of punishment and to the one who has ordained it. Are there still stores of wickedness in the house of the wicked one? Or a lean measure that angers God? Can I be judged righteous with scales of wickedness or with a pouch of deceitful weights? For its rich men are full of thievery and its inhabitants speak falsehood. Their tongue is guile in their mouth. I have hurt you as well by smiting you, bringing desolation for your sins. You will eat but not be satisfied and you will stoop over because of sickness in your innards. You will conceive but you will not deliver. And those you do deliver, I will give to the sword. You will sow, but not reap. You will trample olives, but not smear oil. Trample wine grapes, but not drink wine. The decrees of Omri and all the deeds of the house of Ahab are preserved, and you follow their counsels, so that I will give you over to be an astonishment and its inhabitants to be a cause for whistling. And you will bear the punishment of the shame of my people. Micah 7 Woe is me, for I am like the last pickings of the summer fruits, like the gleanings of the grape harvest. There is no cluster to eat. My soul yearns for a ripe fruit. The devout one has disappeared from the land. And one upright among men is no more. They all lie in ambush to shed blood. They trap each man his brother with a net. They expect to benefit from the evil of their hands. The official asks for bribes. The judge has a share in the payment. And the nobleman expresses his selfish desires. And they plate them together. The best of them is like a thorn, the upright one like a hedge of thistles. On the day of your expectation, your punishment will come. Now you will become perplexed. Do not trust a friend. Do not rely on an official. Guard the doorways of your mouth from the one who lies in your bosom. For a son disparages his father. A daughter rises up against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the people of his household. As for me, I put my hope in Hashem and await the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy, for though I fell, I will rise. Though I sit in the darkness, Hashem is a light unto me. I shall bear the fury of Hashem, for I have sinned unto him, until he will take up my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me out into the light and I will behold his righteousness. Then my enemy will see, and shame will cover her. She who said to me, Where is Hashem your God? My eyes will behold her. Now she will be for trampling, like mud in the streets. The day to rebuild your fences, that day is far away in a distant time. That day exists, and he will come against you, from Assyria to the fortified cities from Egypt to the Euphrates River, from the western Mediterranean Sea, and from mountain to mountain. And the land will become desolate with its inhabitants as the fruit of their actions. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your heritage. Let them dwell in secure isolation, in forest as in fertile field. Let them graze in Bashan and Gilead as in days of old. As in the days when you left the land of Egypt, I will show it wonders. The nations will see and be ashamed of all their unavailing power. They will place a hand over their mouth. Their ears will become deaf. They will lick the dirt like the snake and like creatures that crawl on the ground. 
They will tremble from their places of confinement. They will fear Hashem our God and be afraid of you. Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity and overlooks transgressions for the remnant of his heritage? He does not maintain his wrath forever, for he desires kindness. He will once again show us mercy. He will suppress our iniquities. You will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Grant truth to Jacob, kindness to Abraham, as you swore to our forefathers in days of old. Okay, those were the prophecies of Micah. What did he prophesy? He warns of an impending destruction to Israel because of the sins of Jacob. Now, this includes the high places, which apparently involves some sort of a worship that's absolutely not sanctioned. Now, you might remember, there is a whole book on how this thing is supposed to be done. And the Levites and the sons of Aaron, you know, these are the only guys who can do it. And it has to be done at the tabernacle. And it has to be performed at the holy altar in front of the temple and all. It's a whole thing. This single activity prevents the people from engaging in a legitimate experience with Hashem. And this is the priest's fault. And these high places are the cause of that. God considers that a sin. Now, the Hebrews tell these priests and these prophets to not preach. So God says, okay, they won't preach. Now, because there's no preaching, these guys, they're not going to know what shame is. Now, think about that for a second. If you're at church and the person up on the stage is doing the preaching and all the stuff is happening and you are overwhelmed with shame, then that means that that's some good preaching, (laughs) Okay, additionally, there is a question of false prophets. These guys are just liars, man. They're saying nonsense and the people are listening. From these guys, God will remove every vision. In addition, these guys have wicked, ugly, nasty, lying leaders. Their priests are hypocrites. Finally, the people suffer from priests that do not believe what they preach. All this results in a very evil and sinful society. And for this particular society, that is not part of the deal. And for that reason, destruction is coming. So there's a question about the redemption. Are we going to get out of this thing? What does it look like? Micah describes a period of time where Mount Zion will be the center of the whole world. And everybody who knows anything will want to go to Mount Zion so that they can understand all the concepts of of God, so they know. What is the story of God? Let's go to Mount Zion. And Mount Zion is Jerusalem. There will be peace. There will not be war. The remainder of all of the tribes that have been dispersed throughout the whole world, they'll come together. From among them, this leader will come from the house of David. He will see these people through their deliverance. And it's described as being like a woman in childbirth. So that might be... um, challenging. Their deliverance may be painful. This person will be from Bethlehem, Ephrathah, and the Ephrathah part points to the house of David. Okay, we might be starting to see something here. There is more to come. Thank you for listening. The NQE is out.